All right, y'all, welcome to the show. So uh, today, I got a bunch of RFK stuff. Am I happy about that? No. But nonetheless, we'll proceed. I'll give you all my RFK stuff. We have uh, some shockingly evil new laws being passed in red states. And the whole idea is to ban even the pilot programs for universal basic income. Which, of course, those of you who don't know, is basically like a social security check for everybody to see how people spend that money. Does it really help people? Is it efficient? Etc. Republicans want to end that completely. Then we'll get to Trump being caught in a brazen quid pro quo with billionaire donors. He's getting sloppier as he gets older. He doesn't even care. He used to care about at least the appearance of corruption. Now he's just like, fuck it. I'm going to let my freak flag fly, y'all. Uh, then we'll get to <laughs> the Pope is in a new scandal. And it's kind of hilarious, not going to lie. Uh, I don't want to ruin it now. I'm going to bite my tongue. And then uh, we'll also get to, it appears like the climate apocalypse is upon us. That might sound hyperbolic, but when I show you the specifics, I think you'll agree. So everybody do me a big favor. Please subscribe to the channel. That helps out massively. You have no idea how much. Helps spread everything in the algorithm. Help, you know, grow the base and whatnot. We're trying to get to that 10 million sub number so we can get that new plaque. Really looking forward to that, but I don't even know if or when I'll hit it. But you could hook a brother up. We build it one at a time. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. So the other day we covered uh, Tim Pool interviewed Donald Trump, and it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. He just let him get away with saying things that were demonstrably, provably untrue. The idea that Trump's like an anti-war, anti-establishment guy. Utter nonsense. Uh, Tim didn't push back on it even a little bit. He gave him a smooth hand job under the table. Uh, but here, he spoke to RFK. Now, look, I think there was a time when these sorts of people were sympathetic to RFK, when they supported RFK, when he was doing his, like, when everything he said was basically in anti-COVID protection uh, screed. They were like, yes, I'm with that. I'm with you. Um, when he was virtue signaling and coding himself as right wing with most of the things he said, these guys were like, yes, I'm with you. But um, now that we're getting down to the nitty gritty and you're going to have Biden, Trump, and RFK as the three top candidates running, I think they've looked at the polls and realized, hey, there's a chance RFK hurts Trump and helps Biden. And so now a lot of these guys flipped on a dime on RFK. They used to like him. Now they hate him. Some, I mean, there were some people who just outright admitted we only boosted him when we thought he would help Trump and hurt Biden. But, you know, the second that he started running as an independent and the poll, some polls showed he could hurt Trump, these guys flipped on a dime. I mean, we saw Hannity, right? Hannity was playing patty cakes with him and holding his hand and singing Kumbaya with him on air for months. Then when he started running as an independent and some polls came out not looking good for Trump, Hannity brought out a laundry list of all of his grievances with RFK and read them right to his face and called him radical left and further left than Joe Biden and all these things. So anyway, um, apparently Tim uh, was a little more standoffish with RFK than he was with Trump. And... He's basically going to go after him here because apparently in some speech a while ago, RFK mentioned uh, indigenous, about his knees. <coughs> oh, bless me. All right. He uh, mentioned Indigenous Peoples Day. He called it that instead of calling it Columbus Day. And Tim Pool has a problem with this. <laughs> so uh, here we go. Let's watch. I may surprise you with my take on this. Nobody has been harsher on RFK than me, but this moment, mm, this moment is something. The concern is if your worldview is shifted, that Columbus Day is no longer the day you're celebrating. You're celebrating the counter protest. That you says know, a lot about what, how Tim, you see the world. Let me tell you something, Tim. I, I respect you a lot, but I think what I've tried to do in this campaign is to not get sucked into culture war issues that I consider distractions. I think the big issues that we should be talking about, which you started with, is the fact that 57% of the people in this country cannot put their hands on $1,000 because they're, uh, if there's an emergency in their family, and if you are in that cohort and the engine light come up, comes on your car, it's the apocalypse because you know you can't afford that mechanic. You're, gonna have, you know, you're not going to be able to get to work, and you're not going to be able to pay your rent, and you're going to end up on the side of the rock homeless, and that's, you're, you're going to be circling a drain. And, you know, what, the, what BlackRock wants 
is for us to ignore the contribution they've made and the Fed has made and all of these big and Wall Street's made that this situation and keep us fighting about Columbus Day or Indigenous People Day. I'm not feeding into that. These are economic issues, and that's why I'm running. I'm not running to feed into culture war issues on either side. You can dispute these activists any way you want. I'm not going to get involved in that issue. So in other words, he's like, why the fuck are you asking me about this? Why are you outraged at the fact that I mentioned Indigenous Peoples Day and didn't call it Columbus Day, and I think it makes sense to call it Indigenous Peoples Day? Why is that a problem? Why is that an issue? Are you so against the idea of Indigenous Peoples Day? Are we that married to the idea? It must be Columbus Day. It reminds me of the people who are still like ardent defenders of Confederate statues, even to the point where there was one place, we just covered this, there's one place that had taken the statues down, but then they voted to put them back up. This is that big of an, this is that important to you? And his point is, look, man, this culture war bullshit is a distraction from the reality of the fact that the ruling class is screwing us. That's his point. Now, it's RFK, so it's not like he actually has the solutions to these things, right? I mean, when Crystal grilled him, he said he was, he's not even in favor of Medicare for all. That's basic. That's like the step one in this class war where you're trying to look out for the working class. So I don't think RFK has the solutions, but in terms of sort of scolding Tim and checking his ass and saying, why the fuck are we talking about this? I like it. I like it. Look, that's one direction he could have gone, and I like it. It makes sense. It's good. He also could have just done a robust defense of the idea of let's do Indigenous Peoples Day instead of Columbus Day. It's not that hard to make that argument. You know, it's not exactly a, a secret what the deal was with Columbus. It's an open acknowledged fact that the motherfucker was a genocidal maniac and a psychopath. We're just holding on to the myth of like, yes, the person who discovered this area, even though it, he didn't discover it. And let's pretend like he was good. And even though he was horrifically evil, it's like, so he could have gone the route of a full throated defense of the idea of indigenous people's day. But instead he kind of did the dodge of let's just not talk about this at all because the culture war stuff is a distraction, full stop. <clears throat> I will also say, though, it's true that RFK is kind of a hypocrite on this because there are many times where he does talk about culture war stuff, right? It's not like he said, hey, all social issues, I'm going to leave it to the side and only focus on economics. That's not what he does in his campaign. He's released statements that were in favor of affirmative action. He's released statements that... Uh, took a, an abortion stance. He used to be totally pro-choice. Now he says he's in favor of like a middle ground with some restrictions, right? Um, virtually all of the COVID stuff he talks about, he might claim, oh, this is really just an economic stance I'm taking. Some of the stuff is not really just economic stuff. Masking stuff is not really, uh, you know, primarily about economics. Masking is more of a social issue and he has a strong stance on masking. He has a strong stance on, uh, you know, vaccines and, uh, vaccine requirements for schools and things of that nature. So it's also kind of bullshit that he's like, I don't talk about these sorts of things. Yeah, you do. You talk about them all the time. But I think he knows, he knew the audience, right? The audience is a Tim Pool audience. The audience is going to be pro-Columbus Day and not pro-Indigenous Peoples Day. And so his move was like, why are we talking about this? Other things are more important. Focus on those other things instead of dividing us along these lines, right? And me personally, man, on the one hand, I'm, on the one hand, I agree with that line of argument, right? Like, let's focus on where people can unite. Let's focus on the actual fight, the real fight that matters the most. I do believe in that. But I also, at the same time, believe it's not like all of these social issues are just like boutique side issues. Some of them are very, very important. You know, when you have Roe versus Wade and the right to choose was codified for decades and decades, and then the Republican Supreme Court comes along and absolutely shatters that and takes away rights that people previously had, and you get these fucking horror stories about women who can't get an abortion even though that it's a guarantee their baby's gonna die, but since they're not bleeding out on a table, they're not able to get even a medically necessary abortion. I don't know, that's not just a distraction. That's not just something, hey, you put that on the back burner and don't worry about that. Let's talk. No, I think... I'm a little bit more now of the belief that all of these issues matter. Is there a hierarchy and are things maybe certain things uh, I value more because it impacts more people and can be more central to get creating a better world? Sure, sure. 
But all these things do kind of matter, right? But, you know, look, one of the things we hear from these, we've heard this from many of these so-called anti-establishment right-leaning commentators. They like to say, the culture war is bullshit, the culture war is bullshit, you know, it's all about economics. But then it's like, they talk about the fucking culture war slop 24-7, and it's like, you're not really living the thing that you said you believed. You know, if anything, you're aiding and abetting the dividing of people by leaning so hard into these uh, culture war issues. <clears throat> so look, the epitome of that too, by the way, is unions. Unions are the epitome of like, we're just going to put aside all the areas where we disagree socially and we're going to have some people who are right wing and left wing and center. But one thing they all agree on is fucking better give us better wages and the bosses are assholes. Give us better benefits. Give us better wages. We're going to fight for that. We're going to stand in solidarity together. And we're putting those other things aside so we can actually unite on a common goal. Unions are the epitome of that. So anyway, um, Tim Pool versus RFK. I haven't watched this whole one yet. I might go back and uh, watch this uh, entire one because I'm curious uh, what else they talk about. RFK has been on a wild ride, man, because he used to have this army of right-leaning folks online who loved him and supported him and sucked him off 24-7 and then... Ever since uh, he became more of a threat to Trump, they all turned on him completely. He seems a little bit like a lost man on an island now. There was a time when his polling was about 20% nationally. He's dropped all the way to about 11%. He's lost basically half of his support. And you're seeing that reflected in a lot of how the interviews go now versus how they went back then. Back then, everybody would act like he's a fucking hero. And then now, as you could tell, it's more standoffish. But amazingly, the thing Tim Pool chooses to grill him on is Indigenous People's Day. Really? I remember. You want to you wanna see a masterclass on how to deal with RFK and question him aggressively? Go look at that interview Crystal did with him, which, by the way, at the time, she got a lot of shit for it, but in retrospect, everybody realizes she was fucking 100% correct. Because he acted, you know, hey, I'm anti-Big Pharma, I'm standing up against these crooks and all this stuff, and then Crystal's like, okay, so what's the solution? Shouldn't we nationalize Big Pharma? Shouldn't we take profit out of the whole area of medicine? And he's like, no, I, no, I wouldn't do that. So then what, what the fuck is your perspective then? Obviously we should nationalize Big Pharma, fucking obviously, and he's not in favor of that. Same thing, oh yeah, I'm standing up to the health insurance companies and the health care companies, and okay, so we're doing a single-payer Medicare for all system? No, I don't want that. You can't act like you're this radical, crusading outsider who's going to change the system, and then when she gives you the direct answers as to what would be a better system, like, no, not that. Okay, then. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.